guys, it's Diane, and today we're going to talk about diabetes. Sugar diabetes is what most people will call um, diabetes mellitus. And as you probably know, there's a couple different types, right? There's type 1, which also is called early onset or juvenile diabetes, and type 2, which was called adult onset diabetes. However, there's kids getting it now, and so they prefer to, to just be called type 2. All right, so what we know is that in type 1, they have no insulin. No insulin is being produced whatsoever. And so they must have insulin by another means. It has to be injected into the body. Now in type 2, they may have some insulin, but either they don't have enough or they have some insulin resistance going on or other things are happening with type 2. Okay, Type 1, if you don't have it by the time you're about 30, you're probably not going to get it. Type 2 is extremely common and we see a lot of it. But let's talk about what happens in type 1 just real quickly. The fact that they don't have any insulin, why? Well, where is insulin made in the body? It's made in the pancreas. I think most people know that. And the pancreas is this funky, grisly looking um, gland in, in your upper abdomen. Okay? And in the pancreas, there's these little areas. And uh, these little areas called the islets of Langerhans. Doesn't that sound like somewhere you want to go on vacation? Sounds like somewhere like in Ireland or something to me. Where are you going? Oh, I'm going to the Islets of Langerhans. Well, actually, what the Islets of Langerhans is, they're these little areas in this grisly little blank called the pancreas. And in these Islets of Langerhans, they have these beta cells. And the beta cells are what manufactures our insulin in our body. So, not sure what's going on here. A lot of people think either a virus or an autoimmune situation happens where these are destroyed. And if the beta cells are destroyed, no more, no more insulin. So this is significant because before the advent of insulin, um, and you know, insulin at first, can you believe, came from pigs? Mm -hmm. Poor sign. Yeah. But even before that, if a baby was showing signs of uh, diabetes or a small child, they would tell the mother to taste the urine. And if it tasted sweet, they called that the sweet taste of death because it um, couldn't live. The child wouldn't live long. So, how does that work? Well, let's go all the way back to the cell. Here's your cell. I'm an artist too, huh? And the cell is semi-permeable. It has a semi-permeable membrane. Now that simply means some things can get in and some things can't. Your house is a semi-permeable membrane. You can walk in your front door with a few bags of groceries just fine. Can't drive your car in the front door. Right? So it's semi-permeable. Well, the cell is semi-permeable. And what happens is little things dock on the cell wall and they can just get in and do what they need to do and get out. You know, waste products come in and out. And uh, then you have glucose. Now this is the connection. You really gotta understand the connection between glucose and insulin and the cells. The three things there. So what happens is in a normal person without diabetes, in someone without diabetes, we eat and there we are, down the hatch it goes. And it gets into the stomach and your body says, ding, ding, food on board, or something similar to that. I'm pretty sure I've heard that before. <laughs> and uh, then what happens is as your body metabolizes and gets that food in your bloodstream, why then insulin also goes out with it. And what happens is as the glucose, and you know just about everything you eat, and especially carbohydrates and starch and things, get turned like that into glucose in your body. So as we eat, 
why the glucose is going through our bloodstream and it comes to the cell wall, it can't get in. And so insulin comes and docks here, opens up this cell wall so the glucose can get in. Okay, why is it important for the glucose to get in this cell anyway? Well, I'm glad you asked. That reason is, it's just like gas to your car. Why is it important for you to put gas in your car? Glucose is to your cell what gasoline is to your car. It's the fuel we run on, okay? So it's very important because if it cannot get inside this cell to where your little mighty mitochondria is, your little furnace, if it can't get inside the cell to your little furnace or engine, then that cell runs out of fuel and it dies. The cell dies. So it's really important that it gets in there. But it has to have insulin here as a key, or as a garage door opener if you want to think of it that way, to open it up to get great big old glucose in. See, glucose is huge. Glucose is bigger than most things that come in and out of the cell. That's why it needs help getting in. And insulin is the key that can let it in. Now you can see that if you don't have any insulin whatsoever, you're in trouble. You're in trouble because none of that glucose can get inside the cell. Okay, so that's bad. Yeah, that's bad enough, except the story gets worse. So what happens to the glucose if it can't get into the cell? Does it just go away? No. It is stuck in your bloodstream going round and round and round and round and round and round and round. It's not meant to be in your bloodstream. Glucose is meant to be in here, not stuck in your bloodstream. So what could possibly be wrong with glucose being in your bloodstream? Well, pick a system, any system, all right? Um, let's say, what do you know about diabetics? They have bad eyesight, right? Well, if you could pull out your eyeball and look at the back of it, it would be beautiful. It almost looks like a red velvet. It's just covered in these beautiful, tiny, tiny little blood vessels. And tiny, tiny little blood vessels. And here's big old glucose coming along. What do you think happens? It clogs up those tiny little vessels. Lots of diabetics have bleeding in the back of their eyes. That's because it clogs up those tiny, tiny little blood vessels and it makes them hemorrhage out. Also, you know, you've heard of diabetics getting that laser surgery to help fix some of the back of their eye bleeding. Also, some of the glucose gets into the aqueous humor in our eyeball and it makes it so our vision is very cloudy. How about another one? How about heart disease? Did you know that diabetics are at way higher risk of heart disease than other folks that don't have diabetes? Well, in your blood vessels, as you know, many of us have plaque and fat and cholesterol and deposits in our blood vessels already. And then here comes old glucose. Ever spilt a Pepsi in, on your uh, console of your car? On your dashboard? Oh yeah, I have. And even if you wipe it up, say you don't have a wet wipe, and you're just kind of wiping it up with a towel you got or a napkin from McDonald's or something. All right, then what happens? The next morning you come out, everything's stuck to it, isn't it? It's sticky. We all know that glucose is sugar and sugar is sticky. And we know that the fat and the cholesterol and things like to stick to it. And it tends to make these blood vessels narrower and narrower. It, it helps speed up the atherosclerosis. sclerosis. It makes heart disease a lot worse because of that. It makes everything stick, making our blood vessels much more narrow, makes high blood pressure. What else you want to talk about? Oh, kidneys, how about kidneys? How could it possibly affect the kidneys? Well, what are the kidneys? They're filters, right? Yep. And what happens? Body wants homeostasis. The body demands homeostasis. It does not want to be out of balance. Now, 
If you have this huge amount of glucose stuck in your blood vessels going round and round in your body, no, the body says this is much too high. We, we do not want this. And so it's going to pull all the fluid from all of your body. Your skin, you get really dry skin, really dry mouth. It's pulling all the fluid out. So you urinate it out. You're urinating out that extra sugar, that extra glucose. All of that has to go through the kidneys. Glucose is big and sticky. What do you think it's doing to your nephrons? Yeah, your nephrons are just these precious little tiny coffee filters, you know? And if you ever try to make Swiss Miss in your coffee maker, don't. Especially if you use the kind that has, you know, the little cheap plastic or, you know, little paper, little, yeah, little filter, and no, no. Because the glucose is too, stick, it, too sticky and thick and it clogs it up and it comes up around the side and goes down your countertop, so don't try it. And the same thing happens to your kidneys. And so that's why people with glucose have renal disease. They have kidney failure. Yeah, what else? Oh, yeah, they don't heal, right? They have wounds, and, and their wounds don't heal, right? Why would that be? Hmm, think about it. Let's think about it. What do germs like? What kind of environment? Warm, moist, dark, with a good food source. Yep, that would do it, wouldn't it? Diabetics tend to have really bad yeast and fungal infections underneath their breasts and in their folds. They tend to get um, yeast and fungal infections terribly bad. Warm, moist, dark, with a great food source. Oh yeah, when you make bread, you put yeast in. What else do you have to put in there with it? A little bit of sugar to make it rise to activate the yeast, and then the yeast goes crazy and grows. Yeah. No coincidence there, right? How about um, circulation? They're always getting their feet cut off. They lose the feeling in their feet and they always end up with amputations, all right? And neuropathy, neuro, neuropathy, neuropathy, nerve death. Yeah, and that's because in your feet, way down here distally, your heart's up here, your feet are down here. Your heart has to pump it all back up and around, right? And what do you think oh, big glucose is doing down here to the little tiny blood vessels in your feet? Remember, it's heavy, and it's sticky, and it's big. What's going to happen? It's going to clog them up. That's right. And if they can't get fed, they die. Did you know diabetics have so much fewer sweat glands in their feet and um, Everything, everything, the, the, the nerve endings are not getting fed. If you can't get good circulation, then those tissues will die. They're not healthy. So you can see how they, how they have um, wounds on their feet and end up with the amputations. So then my beautiful picture here, you can get a good idea. Now, this is for type 1 and type 2. The, the side effects are the same, my friends. The only difference here is that in type 1, you have no insulin whatsoever, and it has to be injected. Now you might say, now wait a second, I know somebody who's got diabetes, and they don't take shots, they just take oral meds. Okay, that's type 2. That's type 2. In type 2, you can take oral meds, but that's not insulin. That's not insulin. And not everything injected is insulin. Type 2 can take the oral meds. Type 1, they're stuck with the insulin. Now, some type 2s take insulin as well, but not always. Type 1 will always take the insulin, okay? And insulin has to be, at this point in our um, science, has to be injected in America. So, um, And in type 2, what you simply have is, they may have, in fact, they might have enough insulin. They might have enough insulin to go to every single cell and dock when it's needed. But the problem is the receptor sites on the cell walls are furred up with fat or um, are just resistant, don't recognize the, the insulin anymore, and the cell wall doesn't open. So the same thing happens. The same side effects happen from this. It's just a little bit different in that it was caused by a virus or autoimmune system 
function that went wrong and killed all the beta cells, or we still have some insulin but it's not working. You still have the same complications from this. So, let me explain it one more way for you to make sure we got this drive home, driven home for you. Because I'm sure every single one of you knows somebody with diabetes. It is so common anymore. And you're going to have it in whether you work in home health, whether you work in a nursing home, a hospital, no matter what you do, um, you're going to you're going to um, know people and you're going to have to work with this. Now, I never said I was an artist. I got kids that are, but somehow it didn't get to me. Let's see, which way is this going? Hmm. Let's make this the back, and this will be at the front. Okay, got it. Do you see? It's a car. That's pretty good, huh? All right, there I am. Uh-huh, I'm driving my car right there. All right, all right, so I'm driving my car, and let's say that I left after work, and I'm going back to the Chicago area to see my family. And I'm driving, I had to drive all night long, and I'm really tired. In fact, I'm really tired. And so I turned up the music to some really loud music, you know, and I'm rolling down the window. And I'm trying to sing along to keep awake, and I miss my turn. I miss my turn, and I find myself in a really scary neighborhood in Chicago. And, you know, half the street lights are out, and I'm like, oh my gosh, where am I, where am I, where am I? I turn off my radio, and I hear the ding, ding. Oh my gosh, I'm out of gas. It says one mile, of course, we all know that means three, but I'm about to run out of gas. So I'm looking for a place, looking for a place, looking for a place. Ah, finally, a gas station. So I pull in, and it's one of those that says, cash only, pay before you pump. I take my purse, and I'm like, ah, I never carry cash anymore. My family's always like, I need a 20, I need this, so I don't carry cash. Ah, a 20. Ah. So I go up, and I pay the guy, you know, it's one of those with the bars, and it's got the little half moon cut out. So I slip the 20 to him, and I come back to my car, and I push my button for my little, I don't know what you call it, gas cap flapper thing to open, and it won't open. I push it again, and it won't open. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. So I go, and I'm like, I know, I've got one in my car. So I push the one in the car. It will not open. I'm, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Take my key and I'm trying to pry it open. It will not open. So I'm like, all right, fine. So I go back to, to the guy and I'm like, I'm so sorry. I can't get my gas flap thing open. And I need my money back because i got to go somewhere where they're going to be able to help me, you know, get that open. Points to the sign. No refunds. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Look at it. You know, it's in the middle of the night. Look, I just pointed to the sign. No refunds. Turned around. Okay, fine then. So I come back and I open up my back door, take that gas and nozzle, and I put it back there and I pump 20 bucks in my back seat. Okay. Do I have gas? Yes. No, I do. I have gas. I just pumped it in. I pumped it in myself right in the back seat. I have gas. Is my car going to run out of gas? Is my engine going to run out of gas? Yeah. Why? I have gas. Well, how can I run out of gas when I have gas? It's in the wrong place, right? That's diabetes. You have it. You have glucose. In fact, you have too much. But it's not in the cell where it belongs. It's going through your bloodstream, round and round, raising heck. Yep. Now, what could possibly go wrong with me having $20 of gas in my back seat? Well, let's hope I don't decide to take up smoking. Let's go meet my maker real quick. Mm -hmm. What else could happen? Probably not good for the lungs. Mm -hmm. What else? You wouldn't want to sit there? No, it probably wouldn't be very comfortable, would it? Yeah, might be a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't want to sit there. And it would ruin my interior, wouldn't it? Totally ruin my interior. See? It's the same thing with glucose. When it's stuck in the bloodstream where it doesn't belong, it causes all kinds of damage because it's not in the cells where it belongs. Meanwhile, the cells are starving to death.
because it can't get in. And it can't get in because there's no insulin to open up that cell wall so it can fit in or the insulin's not working anymore because the receptor site is furred up with um, the fat and deposits. So, with that in mind, we need to understand that if you have diabetes, you are hyper, hyper, too much glycemic. You have hyperglycemia. That's what it means. Too much sugar, too much glucose in the bloodstream. I'm not talking about in the cells. I'm talking about in the bloodstream. Okay? So if you're diabetic, that's what you have. You have hyperglycemia. You, you will not be hypoglycemic. Hypoglycemia, how low can you go hypo? It means you don't have enough glucose. Now, this only happens because of the medicine you take or because you're not eating food. Because a normal diabetic will be over here. But because of the medicine they take, they can be over here. And this is a dangerous place to be. Okay, now, hyperglycemia, what are you going to see? These are the same signs and symptoms as diabetes, because that's what it is. So you're going to see the dry skin, the dry mouth, the excessive thirst. I mean, thirsty. Thirsty all the time. And even hunger. Hungry, yeah. Dry skin, dry mouth, thirsty, hungry, and they're trotting to the pot, folks. Urination. They're going to the bathroom all the time. Lots of times they'll have infections. And they're tired with a capital T. Dry skin, dry mouth, super thirsty, hungry, going to the bathroom all the time, infections and tired. Those are your signs that people might have diabetes. People walk around with diabetes for years and don't even know it until they, go, they start going into a diabetic coma, which is what happens if this continues to happen, ketoacidosis and slip into a diabetic coma. That takes a while to happen. It takes a while. This, on the other hand, goes very quickly and is a medical emergency. Now, if you're a diabetic, you're going to be over here. This is what it is. But this happens because, and it can be called insulin shock. This can happen, and you'll see this happen. Here's some examples of why it happens. Usually right before people go down to the dining room and a nursing home, they'll stop and get their shot, their insulin shot, right? So here's old Floyd. He's king of the jungle, you know. He's top dog at his assisted living or, or nursing home. He gets his insulin and uh, he's walking in his walker down to the dining room. Walks into the dining room and there's old Elmer. Now Elmer, if you know about diabetes, he's a, Elmer's kind of like in the ruby stage, maybe emerald, late emerald, early ruby. He don't know. He doesn't, but Floyd doesn't, that Floyd's a diamond, you know. He thinks he's he doesn't understand. Um, he has light dementia, which makes it even worse. So Floyd walks down, he sees Elmer in his seat, and he's mad. Oh, he's mad. You know, and he goes up to Elmer, and he's shoving him with his walker, saying, get out of my seat, you big dummy, get out of my seat. And so staff do exactly what you should never do. They run over to Floyd and say, Floyd, no, no, don't, don't do that to Elmer. Stop, Floyd, stop. Well, of course, that makes someone with mild dementia very upset. Because in his eyes, why are you yelling at me? He's the one in my chair. So he gets very offended, turns around, stomps off to his room, slams his door, doesn't eat anything, and just had his insulin. And the insulin that you get right before you eat is a very fast-acting insulin. You need to eat within 20 minutes of taking that. Now he's down in his room, 10 minutes have gone by, and staff are like, ah, let him cool down for an hour or so, we'll go in there. 
Oh, you go in there and he might be dead. No, what you do is you send in his very favorite person. Okay? It doesn't have to be a CNA. It can be, you know, the, the person that passes the trays. It doesn't matter. It can be the maintenance guy. But send his favorite person in there and get a can of Coke and with an extra, extra cup and walk in his room and talk trash, you know. Fly, I can't believe that happened to you out there. Uh, yeah, look what I got. I got a Coke here. I'll share it with you. Darn it. Yeah, you know. And whatever. Now, it doesn't take a whole lot. You just need a little bit. But you need to get something in there pretty quick because he's going to crash on you. He's going to go into hypoglycemia. He's going to go into insulin shock. So this happens when there's too much insulin, not enough food. Another way this can happen is if they take their oral an uh, anti-diabetic medication or their insulin and let's say, you know, they, they order their, their medication by their activity level. So if you've got somebody who's a couch potato and the most exercise they get that whole day is walking to the bathroom and back. And that's it. And they are taking their normal medication and then their family flies in from Portland with all the grandkids and great grandkids and they go to the park and they do this and they do that and they drag grandpa around with them everywhere they go. He's going to burn through that food a lot faster than normal and he could end up getting hypoglycemic from that. Another way is if they take their insulin or their oral anti-diabetic and then by the time they finally get down to the dining room, they finally get their food, or if you're in home care, you know, by the time they finally get around to eating, they eat, they get an upset stomach, and they vomit. That's another way that could happen. The medicine got on board, but the food didn't stay on board. Those are all ways that hypoglycemia can happen. Hypo, how low can you go hypo? And in this, they're sweaty and shaky and crazy. They don't make any sense. They're sweaty, they're sweaty and they're shaky and they're just, they're not making any sense. They might even try and push you away and they're getting ready to go into insulin shock and this is a, this is a medical emergency. I also want to say to you, if they do pass out on you and they go unconscious, don't try and give them orange juice they can't swallow it. You have to get the glucagon shot, which is another hormone that has to be injected in um, through the skin. Okay? So that is diabetes. This has to be treated quickly. And what I tell people, especially when you have our older people, um, that have the term is a brittle diabetes. If, if they're a brutal diabetic, that means they're up, they're down, they're low, they're all over the place. You get them, they're crashing, then they're 600, and it's just all over the place. You're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. If you have somebody like that, it's important that if they're going into insulin shock and they're shaky and sweaty and, you know, not thinking right and everything, they may have gastroparesis. And if they do, we need to think about building a fire. So if you're building a fire, you don't just lay a log on that fire pit and take your big lighter and go, come on, baby, now come on. No, no, we start with paper, don't we? Yeah, now you don't need the whole Wichita Eagle. Just the funny section will be just fine. And just start with a little bit of paper when you build a fire. And basically what I'm saying with this is just a little bit of a simple sugar. Whether it be orange juice, Coca-Cola, you know what I mean? Um, whatever they like. Honey, I've heard a lot of some people like honey. Whatever it is, just a very simple sugar. Not very much. You know, you don't have to come in there with a 24 ounce soda with a bunch of sugar poured in it, stirred up. You just need a little bit. Because if you do that, then they're gonna go like this, right? I don't need to do that. It makes you feel like you got a hangover and nobody likes that. Then the next thing you want to do, so you get this on board and you wait 10 minutes or so 
and then you need to come back in, let this get absorbed real quick. And this is just for people who are really brittle, have that gastroparesis, you know, that diabetic gut. Then we're going to start with our twigs. And in your twigs here, what I'm talking about is building a fire here. And I would equate that to something more along the lines of um, like crackers and cheese, you know, those cheese crackers, or maybe half a peanut butter jelly sandwich, you know what I mean? So you've got a carb and a little bit of protein in there, something that they can hold down. And you know, you're gonna wait 20 minutes or so, maybe 30 minutes at most, depending how much of it they eat. And then finally, you're gonna put the log on, right? Doesn't that make sense? That's how you build your fire. And then you put a log on, and here we're talking about a solid protein or a meal. All right, because the paper is just, if I burn a piece of paper, if I took this paper right here and I lit it on fire, what's gonna happen? Oh, with flame would go right up here. All right, the sprinklers would go off too. That would not be good. But it, the fire would go big and then it would be gone. In a matter of seconds, it would just be gone. So you don't just want to give them that orange juice and walk away and go, phew, yep. emergency diverted. No, because they're going to go, whoo, whoo. Yeah, so you're going to, you want to give them that, let it get into the bloodstream, and then give them the twigs, and then give them the solid protein. Because this is what you're wanting. You're wanting more of a solid line. But this is going to be too heavy. It's going to be too hard for them to digest in such a short matter of time. Because again, if they're going into hypoglycemia, if a diabetic is going into insulin shock, you don't have a whole lot of time. Okay? You don't have time for them to break this down. They have to start here, go here, and then into there. All right. So. That's about what I know about diabetes. Hope you've learned something today.